More than 10 years were spent on studies and prototype trials in developing a fast and reliable mechanical parking system, which would be space-saving and environmentally acceptable, and also meet the requirements of traffic and parking specialists, city planners, architects, and builders. A system adapted to conditions not only of today, but also of tomorrow. And now, thousands of drivers are already familiar with Rotopark. You couldn't have it easier or more comfortable. Just drive into a free cabin, as you would into your own garage at home, switch off, put on the handbrake, and get out. No need to lock up or close the top. Night or day, in sport clothes or elegant evening dress, your convenience and comfort are assured. No more claustrophobia in gloomy basements. No more hunting for that elusive parking spot. No stairs to climb. With Rotopark's ingenious automatic handling, all that unpleasantness is a thing of the past. Now here is how Rotopark works. This demonstration model shows the mobile platforms. Coupled in a train in ring formation, these allow the vehicles placed on them by the vertical conveyor installation to be moved horizontally. These are the only two directions of movement in the Roto Park system. The Roto Park system is highly flexible. In its various options, oval, circular, or with coupled units, it is adaptable to most sites. The saving in space is clearly shown in the comparison between an existing ramp-type park and a rotor park of the same capacity. Red, conventional parking. White, rotor park. Saving, 60%. And in another example, the same space would provide around 40% more parking slots. On the street level, only the elegant and low-profile cabins are visible. Rotor Park offers the city planner and the architect a whole range of possibilities for functional and aesthetic integration under buildings or public squares, or even by a lakeshore, where a swimming pool could well be incorporated. A Rotor Park has been constructed at Geneva Airport. From the air, we see first the conventional surface parking area for 1,200 vehicles. To its left, Tiny in comparison, the Rotor Park construction site, where 500 vehicles will be lodged underground. Compare the surface used. There's no doubt that Rotor Park has the edge. Unfavorable geological conditions at the site and the likelihood of water infiltration led to the choice of the molded wall technique for the construction of the concrete cylinder. The stability properties of a cylinder, especially in poor soil conditions, are well known to every civil engineer. Expensive lateral anchoring is unnecessary with a rotor park cylinder. Excavation is no problem after the concreting of the molded wall. In a few weeks, the concrete base is poured and interior construction work can begin. The trolley bus gives a clear idea of the small volume taken up by a rotor park with a 500 vehicle capacity. The pillars measure only one foot square in section. The supporting walls, also seen here, are the load bearers for a multi-story office building. Note also the tracks for the future platform rings and the shafts for the vertical conveyors. Meanwhile, the manufacturing of the rotor park mechanism has been started. Diameter 164 feet, depth barely 40 feet. Maximum utilization of the available volume. 
Installation of the mechanical components of the rotor park is a simple and swift operation. The concrete slabs are only six inches thick. The cabin layout is designed to facilitate smooth access and exit. The central core can be used for a variety of purposes, such as cellars, storerooms, conference rooms or showrooms, or adapted to install a restaurant. This rotor park was operational in record time. In fact, as soon as the first two parking groups had been completed. The remaining three groups can be equipped afterwards without interfering with parking operations, each group being an entirely independent unit. So, the cash register starts to ring even before the whole complex is terminated. This construction method, progressive and according to demand, is hardly possible with a conventional car park. Simple and clear instructions. The cleanliness and spacious layout of the drive-in cabins have special appeal for women drivers. The doors are automatically locked as soon as an electro-pneumatic monitor verifies that driver and passengers have vacated the cabin and has sent an electronic signal to the central computer. The cabin floor and sidewalks then open and the vertical conveyor brings the car down to an automatically pre-selected platform on one of the lower levels. The whole process takes only a few seconds. As soon as the cabin floor has closed again, it is ready to receive the next vehicle. Another view of the lowering of a car, also showing the horizontal sweep of a ring of parking platforms. No additional handling is required for the transfer of the car from vertical conveyor to the platform. Protective panels have been installed between each level to catch water or snow runoff. This demonstration model gives you a closer look at the various operations. The vertical conveyor has endless chains to which two pairs of combs are fitted. One pair in extended position carries the car as it is taken down. The other, retracted to save space, moves up toward the cabin, ready to take the next vehicle. A trick shot of the model shows how the teeth of the comb simply pass through those of the platforms. A radical departure from the complicated gimmickry of other mechanical designs. On the model, as in a life-size rotor park, the power for the platform rings is provided by a fixed DC motor operating a drive belt of synthetic material. This extends around the whole of each ring, delivering even propulsion to all the mobile platforms. Automatic controls ensure that the rotation of a ring always corresponds to the shortest distance. And now for the real thing. On the first underground level, the heart of the rotor park, we can see on the left the final stage of an entry and on the right the positioning of a platform into the vertical conveyor shaft. The parking units operate entirely independent of each other. The movement of the ring to position the automatically pre-selected free platform to receive the vehicle takes place while the cabin is still taking in the car, a simultaneous operation which means important time saving. But if a car enters immediately after one has driven out, the platform ring does not move because the slot is already in position.
And a final and vital point, the electricity consumption per entry or exit is barely one kilowatt hour, an entire parking operation for about a penny in energy cost. Payment and retrieval of the car is completely automated. As soon as the amount on the visual display has been paid in, the client receives a punch ticket coded with all the data the computer needs for the retrieval of the car. In less than a minute, this lady will be back at the wheel of her car. No other system is as quick and convenient as Rotopark. But Rotopark has lots of other advantages as well. No thefts, no muggings or accidents, no damage to bodywork, no dust or greasy deposit on car and windshield. Virtually no fire hazard and, in addition, greatly reduced overhead through the elimination of underground lighting, ventilation and heating. And personnel outlays are limited to the pay of one single attendant, who can also handle routine maintenance, help people with physical handicaps, or, as in the Geneva installation, run a gas station on the side. So, Rotopark is not only a revolutionary design, but also a budget-conscious solution to today's and tomorrow's parking problems, and a signal contribution toward a better quality of life.